Okay, so in our continuing saga of updating the Blue Life XL, uh, our quest from Lollipop to Oreo, and perhaps Pi, um, we looked at a couple different ways that we could do this. And in a previous video, I explained uh, several different methods that we could use, and we tried going from Lollipop to Marshmallow by uh, essentially doing a device tree from scratch based on a similar device. And that worked out fairly well, but now I want to show you some other methods of doing the same thing. <clears throat> so we're going to go from Lollipop to Marshmallow, this time by utilizing uh, the difference between uh, the the commits and the changes in the files. So what we notice here is uh, I have Lineage OS Marshmallow downloaded here. I have installed already our um, Lollipop uh, information. We can look, for instance, at our README here. Uh, for CyanogenMod Lineage OS 5.1.1, because that's where I was uh, at last. And uh, so essentially, I just put in all the things that we had done from Lollipop into the Marshmallow just to uh, to give us uh, where we were and then we're going to make the changes to see where we're going. So I explained this in a previous video but I wanted to bring it up uh, yet again just to quickly show you. Uh, I'm using in this case the Wico MSM8916 uh, L5510 as the uh, guide phone it's a very similar phone and it has the same system on a chip and we did some research and it's very similar the only difference being the the rear camera and uh, a few other things to do with the screen and and a few things there so very similar phone and uh, very useful for us to copy from it so when you when things you can do when you want to upgrade and you look at another phone that has been upgraded before this uh, Wico phone started out also uh, back in um, Lollipop and went to Marshmallow and then finally on to Nugget, which we're also going to do that as well. But we can take a look at the differences between the branches. So if you've brought it up on like GitHub or GitLab, uh, GitLab has a very similar option. It just looks a little different. Uh, you can click here on the branches and do some comparisons. So we look at our branch and we say, okay, the default is CM13.0 and we say we want to compare that to CM12.1 where we were. <coughs> so uh, notice here that uh, all of these are listed in order um, and these changes uh, happen from the oldest change being on the top to the newest change being on the bottom. Um, and so we uh, we can take a look at those and see the things that have changed. Notice this is comparing CM12.1 going to CM13.0 or to Marshmallow. Uh, and there's two real methods that we talked about last time. We could go commit by commit and look at those and do the changes, or we can look at the files changed in the long run uh, and see um, what overall has changed. And so just two different uh, two different methods that we could utilize here. Um, and notice that it says it cannot automatically merge. You can still create a pull request and do these merges, but it won't uh, happen automatically. It will take some user intervention because there's some problems with the setup here. So let's uh, take a look at uh, the differences. So one nice thing about going commit by commit is that you can actually see what changed and why they changed it. One downside of going commit by commit is you notice they have a revert right here, which means they did some work and then they decided that wasn't a good idea, so they reverted that work. So if you're going to follow along commit by commit, you might be doing some work that eventually gets reverted and goes back to the way it was before. So it's really up to you, but there's two different ways to look at it and how you can uh, make your changes is by going commit my commit or going through the files. And we're going to take a look this time at just going through the files and see what we need to change in our um, folder as well. So we've got the device folder here, device blue life Excel, which is all of our stuff from uh, Lollipop. The first thing that I'm going to do is change my readme uh, to help myself so I don't get confused. Um, so this is going to be 6.0.1 and uh, 
we'll just go ahead and put the tag marshmallow on the end here just to help us um, you know keep track of what we're doing so the first file in here is board config make so let's take a look so we open up our board config make and we can do some comparison here now there's also more ways to do this you could just download the new one and then do some comparisons using uh, diffuse where you're actually comparing the two files side by side on your machine you can just scroll through here and see what you think you need to change uh, lots of different uh, options available for you um, we're just going to scroll through here and, and see what happens as we go along we notice here we have a change in the board kernel command line and uh, we'll take a look at that Oh, one thing that's really confusing is you actually this is backwards. So to see the change from 12 to 13, you actually have to look at this comparing 13 to 12. I know that seems really backwards, but that's actually how you need to do it to uh, to get the changes to work properly. So we look at our files changed, and now we go through and we see uh, a kind of a different story. So let's see, uh, notice the year going up sequentially, so it actually makes sense because 13 is newer than 12. And the, yes, this has confused me more than once. You really should be careful about this, but it seems backwards to me. Hopefully for you it'll make more sense and you won't have a problem. So we'll look at our first file, uh, boardconfig.make. Uh, we notice that we have, uh, you know, they just changed the date. I guess we could change ours if we wanted. You know, it doesn't really matter at this point. Uh, I'll put 2019 because that's where we are now. Force 32-bit is true. And then after that, a lot of um, information is removed. So let's take a look. Here we go. Force 32 bit true. And then all of this information gets removed. And where does it start and stop? It starts and include the board config common. And it stops at QCOM firmware true. That's a lot of material removed, but. Uh, that's probably because they moved all of this material to actually be in uh, one of the other files. So we'll start this include board config common dot make right here, and we're going down to target qcom firmware true. There we go. So all that goes away and is replaced with this right here. Now notice what they've done is they've switched from using device cyanogen MSM 8916 common to using uh, device wico MSM 8916 common. So in this case we're going to want to change this to blue, but that means we're going to have to download this MSM 916 common that was in wico and use that for our board now. And the reason they moved all of this stuff out is they probably have moved it all into this common folder. And so we'll definitely have to check on that. Uh, then they remove everything from audio on down to the end of board SC policy union. So let's take a look at that. It's pretty much gutting the entire file. Here we go. And including. some information here. Device 
blue, life XL, include device path board anything dot make. So uh, they're moving it all into this board folder. So what we see is we don't have like a board folder here, but if we take a look, I bet that they, they will. If we open that up, and so it's got a board folder, and they've just put all of that in there instead. So let's see. That's all changed here. Now, do we have device path in here twice? No. Okay, good. Definitely want to make sure when you're kind of copying from someone else's work that you're not uh, duplicating efforts or, uh, you know, creating loops where it's confused. The compiler get confused about what it wants to do or what it's going to do next. So a big change in this file, pretty much taking all of this stuff out, and we're going to put it in a board file somewhere else. Um, so that's interesting. Uh, some changes to the readme. One nice thing is if you are done with a file, you can push this button and close it out, close that out. We'll take the next one right here. So this audio mixer paths XML, we're looking at that. A lot of changes in here. We're going to go through and make these edits. And uh, for the sake of uh, your guys this time, I'm uh, going to go ahead and do these edits while it's, I'll, I'll stop the video do these edits, work through these, and then bring that back for you to uh, see kind of the finished result. But a uh, lot of um, files that get changed here. The great thing about going through file by file is you can look at it and say, well, you know, I really don't need to change this part or that part. Um, in this case, the phones are so similar, we're probably going to end up changing all of the same stuff. But uh, but you could look through it and say, you know, um, my partition sizes did not change, so I don't need to change those. You know, just um, some different things to uh, think about while you're going through and editing um, if you're going file by file. So I'll go ahead and pause this video. I'll do these edits. Um, we'll come back and take a look at that together. Okay, so uh, I think most of our changes are done. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, one thing to remember is uh, is the dependencies. Um, when I went through, I ended up keeping the Wiko dependencies because I thought about this. So if I have to make um, these device folders and make one specifically for blue, which we might have to do if there's things we need to change. But if we don't, we can utilize the same repositories that are already out there if it's close enough that it's going to work out the same. So I kept the same dependencies uh, and then uh, I'm going to uh, utilize that. So one of the things, for instance, the um, board config common, it's going to uh, device blue, MSM common, uh, board config common, but we can actually leave that to be Wico uh, for now and test that out and see if there isn't anything in the common folder that we need to change, then actually we can just continue to use that and use that as our, um, as our, uh, you know, as our included tree and not have to do that extra work and other people will update that for us which is kind of convenient um, I did notice here though that I need this to be Wico Wico there we go. Um, and hopefully we can get that working there another thing is you could just take this out and then you don't have to worry about it um, you know, in how you utilize that. So, a couple different avenues to go there. Um, next video, I'll try uh, try building it and see what we get. Um, remember, though, that I've only changed the device tree thus far, but I'm utilizing the dependencies from Wico to update things like the kernel, the um, you know, the other. Uh, device tree commons common trees that you need but if you were doing this all uh, 
you know, for your device and there wasn't enough common between the guide phone and your phone, you would need to go through and update things like your kernel and do the same thing that we just did. Do a comparison of the two. What's the end result? And we can go through and fix that. Um, next time we're going to look at how we can add commit by commit by actually using git to do that work for us. Now there's a lot of problems that you run into there because you run into issues with merging and uh, so hopefully we'll look at that next time. Um, I feel that's a little more complicated than what we've done so far so we're just kind of making a progression. We've done a device tree from scratch, we've rebased that device tree on another device, we've gone through now and we've looked at uh, comparing files that were upgraded and look at what we need to add to ours and we're going to try building that here in a minute and see what we get and then we also uh, will take a look at doing commit by commit and utilizing git to do some of that work for us which is really important when you have like a thousand commits that need to be done especially on the kernel the kernel is the one that has the most commits done to it but you also need to keep in mind that your vendor files may have changed so lots of things that we would need to uh, update to keep this all in good working order. But hopefully this gives you a good idea of one of the ways that you can go through and upgrade this. We're going to take a look at building it and see kind of what we get. I'm sure we're going to have a few errors right off the bat, so let's uh, let's check that out.